there's a story I once heard about a man who was walking down the street and he went by a used bookstore and in the window he saw a book that was entitled How to Hug. And he was taken back by the, the title and being somewhat ro of a romantic nature, he went in to buy the book. To his chagrin, he discovered that it was the seventh volume of an encyclopedia covering the subjects from How to Hug. When Jesus was asked about the very nature of life, the answer was given to love. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Love is the beginning of the law of Christian faith and of life itself. Salavim, a 13th century historian, wrote about the attempt of King Fred Frederick III to raise children experimentally without maternal affection. The king wanted to find out what kind of speech and what manner of speech these children would have if they grew up with, with no one speaking to them beforehand. So he made the uh, foster mothers and nurses to suckle the children, to bathe them, to wash them, but in no way to prattle with them or to speak to them. For he wanted to learn whether they would speak Hebrew, uh, which he thought was the oldest language, or, or Greek, or Latin, or Arabic, or maybe even perhaps a language their parents spoke, or from, you know, the parents that uh, were their birth parents. But, but he labored in vain because the children all died. For they could not live without the, the petting and the joyful faces and the loving words of their foster mothers. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. Do this and you shall live. Jesus sets love at the very foundation of all life. Our life in relationship with God and our life in relationship with our neighbor is at its very foundation based in love. Jesus illustrates this by telling a story about a man who was in dire need and in his dismal situation was passed by by and purposely passed by by two prominent members of the Jewish society and helped by a very unexpected neighbor. Jesus asked the lawyer, the one who prompted the story because he was trying to justify himself, which of these three do you think was a neighbor, as in the Old Testament called to love our neighbor as ourselves, to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the lawyer said, and I imagine through gritted teeth, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Jesus is discipling a love that is a down to earth, roll up your sleeves and let's get busy type of love. A love that reaches out to someone who's in need, no matter who they are. And not just to say to a brother or sister who is naked or lacks daily food, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill. The love that Jesus is talking about is a love that, that when a brother or a sister is in need, it is moved to compassion. It is a love that reaches out to meet those needs. On a flight from Denver to Wichita, an ambulance delivered a 27-year-old passenger who was obviously paralyzed from the shoulder down as the attendants struggled to get him on board and seating him. They cradled him in a seat right in front of us, strapped him tightly in. 
As the pilot taxied on the runway, the force of this maneuver caused him to lunge over towards the other seat. The flight attendant quickly came over to help prop up the man, get him back into his seat. Quickly, we were in the air on our way. Beverages were served. This was a while back. Uh, a meal was served. And then one lady, as she finished her meal, looked up and to see this, this paralyzed gentleman still had his meal in front of him. So the flight attendants were all too busy with other passengers to help him with his meal. Traveling alone, all this man could do was just look at the meal. This lady slipped out of her seat and to his side and inquired if the flight attendants were going to help him eat and he didn't know so she asked him if he could help she could help her help him he responded oh thank you that i'd be so grateful for that and as the lady cut his meat into pieces and 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 placed them in his mouth she felt rather awkward and con conspicuous but much needed during the meal, the man whose name was Bill told her about his unfortunate accident, about his loneliness, about his joy, his struggles, his faith, his hope. Their lives connected because a lady was willing to respond to someone in need. This kind of love is, is the cornerstone of the Christian life when given the opportunity, it can change lives. Keep these words which I command you this day in your heart, says the writer of Deuteronomy. Recite them diligently to your children and talk of them when you sit down in your house and when you walk by the wayside, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign upon your hand and they shall be a frontlet between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Why would God want us to keep these words and teachings and teach them diligently to our children and to wear them and to write them on our doorposts and our gates? It's because when Given the opportunity, this love that God is advocating can change lives. Tears glistened in the eyes of Salvation Army Officer Shaw. As he looked at the three men before him, Shaw was a medical missionary and he just arrived in India and the army was taking him to this particular leper colony. And these three men before him had manacles and fetters binding their hands and their feet, cutting into their diseased flesh. And Captain Shaw turned to the guard and said, please unfasten their chains. The guard said, well, it isn't safe. These men are dangerous criminals as well as lepers. I'll be responsible for them. Their suffering has been too much already. And Shaw reached for the keys, took them, knelt down and tenderly removed the shackles and treated their bleeding ankles and wrists. About two weeks later, Shaw had his first misgivings about setting these criminals free when he had to take an overnight trip and dreading, le dreaded leaving his wife and his children alone. His wife insisted that she was not afraid with God being her help and stay. Well, the next morning, she went to her front door and she was startled to see these three criminals lying on her front steps. One of them explained, we know the doctor go. We stay here all night, so no harm comes to you and your childs. That is how these dangerous criminals responded to an act of love and compassion. 
Christ came to set the fettered people free through, act, through his act of kindness and love on Calvary. And he calls us to go and do likewise, to love our neighbor as ourselves. A little girl was sent on an errand by her mother. She took too long to come back and her mother demanded an explanation when she finally did return. The little girl explained that on her way she met a little friend who was crying because she had broken her doll. Oh, said the mother, so you stopped and helped her fix her doll? Oh no, replied the little girl. I stopped to help her cry. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. This is a love that's not just meant to be felt. It's a love that's meant to be expressed. A love that is meant to be shared. It's a love that went all the way to the cross to express itself. God, through Jesus Christ, modeled us this love in its greatest expression on Calvary. However, it matters not how great or how small the expression. It only matters that this love is expressed in response to those in need. The man asked Jesus, what must I do to have life? Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. When that same man asked him, who is my neighbor? Jesus gave him an example of someone loving his neighbor as himself. And then asked the questioner, questioner which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell among the hands of robbers. The questioner rightly replied, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said, if you want to live, if you want to have life, if you want to have life abundantly, go and do likewise. And Jesus says to us, if you want life, if you want to be unfettered and live free, if you want to live life abundantly, then go and do likewise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.